Penn State football gets a huge boost at the end of 2022. And yes, we are finally at the end of the class of 2022 in T. Frank's film room. I'm your host, Thomas Frank Carr. Vega Yoane, a four-star offensive lineman from Washington, decommits from the Huskies. He's from Graham, Washington, was committed to the Huskies, decommitted late in the process after they fired the head coach. Penn State gets on the case. They get him in a mad dash about six weeks between his official offer and National Signing Day, something something in there in to that effect. Uh, they go out to Washington. He comes out to Penn State for an official visit. And then on National Signing Day during James Franklin's press conference, they make the announcement, he's a Nittany Lion. And we'll get into his strengths and weaknesses, and we'll get into his areas of technical ability and physical ability here in T. Frank's film room, as we always do. But with that sort of story, the drama that's involved in that, you have all the key ingredients. You have need, you have a time element, you have talent, you have distance, all of these things that you need to create some drama. You could have been living that in real time at bluewhiteillustrated.com. Sign up for just $1 and you get 12 months of access. So you get insider information from Ryan Snyder. You get the info as it's coming out from Penn State and of course from the player himself when we get that stuff. That all comes to you on three exclusive content at uh, bluewhiteillustrated.com and of course in the message board where you find the real details. Sign up for just a dollar, 12 months of access. First link in the video. So scroll down while I'm talking, hit that. It'll open up a new tab and you can listen for a little bit. I'll keep yammering here for a second while you sign up. It's just a dollar. You get a year. You get next recruiting cycle, next national signing day, all that stuff. Okay, so let's introduce you to Vega Yoana. He is... We're going to go with 6'3 for this video because that's what he's listed at, at on three. He's probably closer to 6'4 at this point, and I believe that Ryan Snyder, our recruiting insider, has him at 6'4, 330 pounds. But for the purposes of this and talking about where he fits on the offensive line, we're going to stay with 6'3. He is not ranked nationally by on three, but he is the 23rd offensive lineman in the nation and the fourth player in the state of Washington. And this is where sometimes players fall through the cracks. You know, whether it's the pandemic, whether it's that Washington is not known as a football powerhouse, whether Ioane didn't get out on the recruiting circuit to be uh, compared to like talent, whether he was a late bloomer. All of those things factor into some guys getting a little bit overlooked. And in this case, Penn State is the benefactor because he's really good. He's really good. And I'll, we'll get into that right now when it comes to just the, the, the most obvious stuff. With Vega Ioane, his size and speed. He is, again, 330 pounds, and he's all of it. And watch the way he pulls here. And then, uh, here he comes through the offensive line, breaking, about to hit the hit the Jets here, getting to the safety. And that's, that's impressive. Here he is pulling. Oh, these poor defensive backs. The, the hip flexibility, the speed, the power. Look how quickly he gets out into space. When he gets out and he runs... In open space, he has the ability that makes you go, really? Wow. I, I don't have a, an official time, but just looking at him on film, he is close to a five-second 40. For an offensive lineman at 330 pounds, that's awesome. If he ran a sub-540 eventually, I would not be surprised. That is rare, that size and speed. So that's what we're starting with. That's the building blocks that Vega Ioane brings to the table. Quick feet, athletic straight line speed, runs well. There aren't any weird stiff hiccups. He just opens up and runs so beautifully for an offensive lineman. And then let's get into some of the fun stuff because I, I say this sometimes that you, why I do the film room is because, just watch these domination blocks. This is just a highlight reel. So just watch him dominate kids that aren't going to play football at the college football level. Uh, some The reason I do T. Frank's film room is to go beyond the highlight film, show you game tape, and find where the areas are that they're hiding on their highlight film. In rare cases, you go to the game film and you watch plays like this and you go, oh, this is just more highlight film. That's what Vega Ioane's game film looks like. It's just one highlight reel of him blowing kids up and, and moving guys off the ball in huge effects. And we'll get into why it's not just about his size and his speed and dominating players um, that are not going to be playing at his level going forward or not on his physical level. It's not just about that. It's how he's doing it as well. And there was some stuff in there as far as his technical abilities that we're going to get to in just a little bit. 
Actually, let's get it. Let's get to it right now because these are the things that separate him in my mind and make him closer to players like Landon Tangwall that have come to Penn State recently. So again, athleticism. We're comparing him to the tops of this Penn State class. I'll get to that in just a second. But when it comes to the technical ability, these things, that's where we're going to. This is called a reach block. Do you know what reach blocks are very important for? They're very important for zone blocking, also known as what Penn State runs, inside, outside zone. He's coming, and I'm going to back this up here so you can watch it again. He's coming from the left tackle position, and he's trying to block the defensive tackle to his inside shoulder. So he is getting over multiple gaps in the offensive line in order to make this block. And watch how quickly he does that, how quickly he flips his hips and gets into the gap. Penn State does not have players that can do this this way currently on the roster other than the aforementioned Landon Tangwall. So here he is again, a different type of the same thing. This is a seal block on the outside for a pitch play. He quickly works around the defensive end to his outside, wins this block, seals it off, and creates a giant hole to the outside for the running back. Those are highly athletic offensive line plays. Here he is on a power play, on a counter play, where he's at the point of attack. A down block to make sure that the offensive line is set at the actual point of attack, and then his job is to get to the second level and seal the second level. The linebacker's taken care of. He ran himself out of the play, and look his eyes. He's searching downfield, finding the safety. He gets contact with the safety, and if this ball goes to the point of attack, it's gone. He's made his block. Here's some pull blocks. Awesome job. Everyone loves the domination block on a pole block because it looks so good. Here's another one. His hips open and he glides to the point of contact. This is, again, no stiffness in his motion. His ability to open up his hips, turn, and be square to his target when he gets there as a pole blocker. These are rare qualities for a guy his size. And then here's a down block, another key inside zone block where you have to combo block with the guy next to you and then work to the second level at a lateral pace. He turns this into a wall. Okay, got that guy. Then he gets off that block, gets to the second level, and look at the running back behind him getting 10 yards before he's touched. Technically, he's phenomenal. I did not see a block on film he couldn't execute. And those reach blocks and seal blocks and all of those athletic things, those are harder than some of the plays where you have to pull and get out into space because you have to do those things so much more quickly on the interior or else you're going to lose. And his ability to flip his hips and do those things at that size is is phenomenal. And when you look at his technical ability, it's enhanced by the fact that Penn State has some freaks in this class. Deny Dennis Sutton is a freak of nature at defensive end. Nick Singleton is a complete athlete uh, as a running back. Zane Durant, while being undersized, is a fluid, explosive, powerful athlete with great balance and all of those things that you look for in a defensive tackle. That's the class of athlete we're talking about with Vega Ioane, with his skills and his size. So Pense gets another freak late in the process. And this is, and James Franklin already talked about it, when you combined the size and you combine the technical ability and the maturity that he has, and we'll get to some more of that in just a second, James Franklin said he can come in and compete early. He's got the maturity, and he mentioned some of his personal things that Vega Ioane does off the field. Uh, just a young man who's got a, a good head on his shoulders, very mature, comes from a big family. All of these things that they are looking for uh, in, in, in players that are mature is what I'm trying to say. So we're talking about a guy that can change the mathematics up front for Penn State's offensive line Maybe not, maybe in training camp, maybe not, maybe in the middle of the season, but these are difference makers on the offensive line and Penn State gets another one. So let's go to one last question. And I mentioned he's got great speed, fluid hips, loose, agile, explosive. Is he a tackle? And the reason I left him at 6'3", because he's not quite, he's 6'4"-ish, 33 inch arms. Good athlete. Can he play tackle? Well, let's look at what we have on film. And we're going to, again, start with his technique first because this is just different. This is just different than what you see at the high school level. I don't see this very often. Of Watch his hands on this play. He's going to get a two-arm chop on the defensive lineman that's going to take the defensive lineman out of the play without even using athleticism or size. Watch that. I'll roll this back again so you can see it. Because it's, it's a little bit subtle. It's hard to see sometimes. But the defensive lineman is trying to create contact. And when he just doesn't allow contact because he wins with hand fighting, the defensive lineman just falls out of the play and he pushes him beyond the play. That's rare to have that sort of hand fighting 
and the size and athleticism. Here he is blocking in space against a defensive lineman for a good period of time. That's a, a good rep. Here he is on a bit of a shorter set. Power, anchor, got it. Here's going to be a, a play with a delayed blitz. Helps, gets to the blitz. Great job. Here he is. This is one of the few times you see him against space and speed. A bit of a delayed blitz. He runs him to the outside. Not a threat to the play. He just looks like a guard. I mean, that's the only difference is he looks like a guard. And as a pass protector, he's got a great kick slide, great balance, great power. He's upright and low. He's got that base and that anchor, everything you want from him. He uses his leverage and his length well, even in pass protection. He doesn't aggressively reach it guys he doesn't get over his toes it's all so sound he just looks like a guard now if you want to say try him at tackle see if he can play right tackle I'm all for it let's see let's find out I think ultimately his positional skills make him an all something offensive guard all big 10 all American I don't know We'll find out how all of this stuff translates against guys that he can't just steamroll. Because that is a part of the equation here is he's not, uh, there is no point that he was stressed by any football player on film. He dominated all of them. Does that domination continue at the next level? Phil Troutwan, James Franklin, from what we've heard, seem to think he's very good to James Franklin saying to that point of, yeah, uh, he could, he could come in and be a factor early. And I think so too. But is it a tackle? I would love to find out. And then from there, you move him inside because technically and mature-wise, he can handle it. I think he could handle finding out and then moving him inside. And you don't have to be a perfect fit to play well at this level uh, at that position. And I think even at tackle, all of these skills are going to translate. Maybe he wouldn't be the all-something player there, but he would be very good. So before I uh, make this runaway train of hype go any further... We're going to leave off there for Vega Yoone in uh, T. Frank's film room. Make sure you subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. And, of course, to YouTube for Blue White Illustrated's content here in the social uh, channels and the multimedia channels that I, I preside over. T. Frank's film room exclusively to YouTube. And, if again, going back to if you subscribe to Blue White Illustrated, you get early access to T. Frank's film room when it comes out on the site, and then it's live later on YouTube. So if you want to get the information and the written version, subscribing for just a dollar, it is the way to go. I'm your host, Thomas Frank Carr of T. Frank's film room. We'll be back next time.